you just tuned in with Defiance the Dawn, live on the chopping block. Prepare to level the game with the knowledge of street science. Turn your speakers up and let's get into it. Oh, that hurts so good, man. Hey, what's up, what's up, what's up, what's going on, my people? Welcome to another episode of the chopping block. And you're here with Defiance the Dawn, Corey Austin. However, you went ahead and came in through knowing me, but I'm glad that you stopped by for another show. It's been a real good year so far for me with being able to start these projects, execute them, and seeing some good results. So I'm very happy about that, and I'm pleased that the audience is growing, and I'm getting good feedback, and people are liking it, and um, they're walking away with something out of it. So that's, that's all I could hope for, something that... I drop and some jewels that I might talk about that can hit you in the head. And if it gives you a little information, hey, run with it. And that's all I have to say. It's been real crazy out here in Cali. I'm out here in California. I'm like, man, but I've been feeling like we in damn Seattle. Because the rain's just been nonstop. Everything's been overcast and wet. Mm. I just don't think Californians are used to it because they get in a little bit of drizzle and everybody starts driving out of control. It's like nobody knows how to drive anymore. You know, everybody's kind of freaked out and they don't know how to really turn and you got to maneuver around these people. I grew up learning how to drive out here in Cali, but I was born in Chicago, and everybody that taught me how to drive is from Chicago. So maybe it's that whole windy city driving on black ice and snow that I feel like conditions are different for me, but I don't know. So what's going on in the news right now? Y'all see that crazy stuff? Um, what, what they're talking about with Liam Neeson? He had an interview that he did. And this is the guy that has done Taken, Taken 1, Taken 2, Taken 3. Everybody loves, you know, the movies that he does. It's crazy. He's always getting a daughter taken or somebody always getting kidnapped that he knows. I just don't know. I don't even think he needs to be a parent if he always getting, you know, somebody's always getting kidnapped around him. You know, personally, he don't need to be in charge of anybody because somebody always coming up missing on his watch where... That's just crazy. But anyways, this fool went out and said that I think it was 30 or 40 years ago that he had an incident. They were asking him how he got into the mind state of his new role. And I think the movie is called um, Cold Pursuit. And he talked about an incident that happened decades ago where he went in. And I guess, unfortunately, the tragic uh, incident led to a friend of his being raped. And he went in and he found out about it and he asked his friend, well, do you know who it was that raped you? And she said, no. And he asked, do you know what race he was? She said he was black. So Liam says that he decides that he's going to go to a bar in a black community and hope for any black man to come out and just start anything with them or rub them the wrong way or just do anything to set him off because he had the intentions of killing him. Now, that's just mind blowing. So an innocent person that has nothing to do with anything with you and your incident can be the victim of a violent crime just for the sake of it. And you have a lot of people coming out, oh, he's so brave and he's telling this story and it takes a lot of guts and it was a long time ago and this and that. And I, for me, I want to play devil's advocate. Because some of these same people, when we saw the Mike Brown um, murder, when there was Sandra Bland, the Freddie Gray, the Eric Gardner, the um, 
Walter Scott, I mean, I keep going, there was a public outcry and black folks that were pissed off about it. And people were talking about taking up arms and action against police officers because these incidents, just random police officers. And even if they didn't step forward and do any action or crime about it, they were intentionally ready in their head through the frustrations. And then what do we hear from this? Well, all lives matter and that's the wrong thing to do. You shouldn't be out there um, ready to kill a cop and all this stuff. And one side, it's very okay to go ahead and commit a crime. And the other side, it's not okay. You know, so I just want to say there's never a time that any particular person does anything and to hold and condemn an entire group of people behind it but for the sole actions of one individual. That might seem like common sense, but we'd be surprised at how many people in our society are willing to condemn and judge an entire group of people based on the actions of a single individual. That's almost prehistoric. That's a very primal, primitive way of thinking. How do you find yourself justifying the murder of anybody or any individual that had nothing to do with the crime that you're angry about. And to know that anybody can say that, well, in the moment you can feel one way and you're acting off of impulse that you feel in the moment. Well, that's almost similar to how animals are because animals are very instinctive in a moment. They act off of instincts. They don't have the capacity to be able to weigh things out and look at things with reason and being able to analyze a situation and comprehend things based on circumstance. Those are supposed to be the things that separate man from animal, but in its raw form, a man can still be an animal. As we see, Liam Neeson speaks on murdering just anybody that's the same complexion of the uh, supposed assailant. That's some fucked up shit. So we have a problem, especially with the whites in the dominant society that support that type of thinking. Long ago or not, how can we support anybody that feels that that's okay? black, white, or indifferent. So it's it's a crazy time right now when we take a look at the things that we support and the things that we find just and the things that we find righteous. But with all that being said, I mean, how y'all doing? Y'all getting your tax returns right now? Everybody doing good? <laughs> Everybody getting their money? The money good right now? Yeah, I'm sure there's a, a lot of y'all out there spending your money on a lot of these little trinkets out there, these little nigga trinkets y'all get in, they get their tax returns, they want to be able to get the new car, get their fresh whip, go ahead and get their uh, get new clothes, be able to go ahead and uh, make sure that you look fresh, get new chains and everything like that, so you really flossing and you out here doing your thing, but in a matter of 30 days, most of that stuff will either disappear or be repossessed. Y'all probably, more, <laughs> most y'all looking to do a lot of that spending are usually living in your mama's crib still or barely getting by. And uh, need to really get your priorities in check. Everybody's kind of wondering why the hell we got to... Uh, worry about the taxes coming back and all this stuff and real shit i see a lot of people on social media they they worried and even on blog sites because the whole shutdown still 
Yeah, they opened it back up, but they're shutting it back down on the 15th. So you have that little small window. I, I saw one dude, he said, you know, I'm not even tripping. I'm getting my money right now, you know, and, and it's so good. I'm not tripping like I used to over these tax returns. I, I used to be all over them and now I'm waiting six, seven days, you know, and I, and I just keep putting it off and, um, you know, I'll just get to it when I get to it. But little does he know that there's a window right now and see, he wasn't even paying attention and they, they playing with people and they got this whole thing just played out. And it's like, why, why are we going through this? Well, if you really went ahead and had not all your eggs in one basket, it really shouldn't matter. But at the same time, they playing with people because they have their own agenda. I said this before in a podcast. People um, are over here thinking that we fighting over a damn wall. People, we are not fighting over a wall. They could build a damn wall if they wanted to. Give a damn about the wall. They've been having drugs and guns and everything come into this country since its conception. And the government has been making money off of that. They have ties and allegiances with different cartels. They utilize this. If they didn't really want this stuff to flood in, they wouldn't let it. There's economical boosts. There's, you know, a a legal black market boost. There's all types of things that they make on the back end. The pioneers of this country were involved in illicit things. There's never been a time where America was a legal, well, moral standing society. That's just not the truth. I'm sorry. Right now, they're making decisions on who's going to be the next president of the World Bank. Currently, the president of the World Bank was a man named Jim Yong Kim. He had been uh, the president of the World Bank since 2012. He was put in by the United States, actually. Uh, he's, he's actually an American, a Korean American. Jim Yong Kim has been okaying for billions to be invested into the Chinese economy. What the World Bank ends up doing, the World Bank creates very um, low interest loans for upcoming poor countries, for countries that are third world or growing economies. China has been on a rise and one of the power elites for a long time now. They were officially not declared a third world at all, I think in like 2014, 2015. And they're still getting billions, billions, you know, from the World Bank. I think like they're like almost near 10, uh, 10 billion in loans. So them able to do this and with the U.S., in China right now, the U.S. is trying to place these high interest tariffs on China because trade is a, a, a there's a big disparity where the United States spends about 500 billion importing from China. China spends about 120, 125 billion importing for the United States. So there's interest charged on the trade tariffs towards China because they spend with us a significant amount less than we spend with them. So now Trump administration wants to try to go and put a strong influence within the World Bank. Because out of nowhere, which this is this is kind of the crazy part. Jim Young Kim 
World Bank president, he goes ahead and just abruptly announces that he's stepping down early this year. He did that. I think it was January 9th. He abruptly just announces he's stepping down. And this is like three years before his full term is even up. So for some odd reason, he can no longer serve as being president of the World Bank. Now, all of a sudden, since he's stepping down, Trump nominates a man named David Malpass to be the new World Bank president. Who's David Malpass? He's currently the Secretary for International Affairs at the Treasury Department. He's also the point person that Trump administration has for trade negotiations with China. So they want him to oversee the government's relationship with the World Bank by being president on the seating board. So during the time that we're experiencing a shutdown under Jim Yong Kim, they wanted to place sanctions against the United States to go ahead and have the United States take larger loans from the World Bank. Now, all of a sudden, our government is shut down. Trump's administration is putting their people in the World Bank. We have these weird trade tariffs and um, offsetting relationships with China right now. There's a lot going on, and it's always a bigger picture on what's going on globally that plays a part in why we're affected domestically. And these are some of the things that we need to think about. So every everybody's kind of focused on their immediate position, which they should be. And your immediate position is definitely going to play a part in how your lifestyle and the things you want and what you're doing is that part of the quality of life that you're looking for. So at the end of the day, when you got money coming in, or if you don't have money coming in, thinking about the cars, the jewelry, the clothes, the females, if you're female, the males, the people that you could either impress or the things that you can get or really all the wrong things to be focused on because all those tangibles, all those trinkets, none of them are anything that you can accumulate or build as an asset. Those are all liabilities because every one of those things just depreciate. You can't appreciate them because they don't build any value. How can you appreciate something that doesn't have value? Something that depreciates and holds no value was well, nothing that you can appreciate. And that's that's as simple as that. We get so lost in the conundrum of everyday life and the trials and tribulations and these hurdles that we have to jump through or the hurdles that you have to jump over where we end up almost missing a part of ourselves. We don't understand what it is to really invest your time or invest in yourself. What does that really mean? You remember when you were a kid and you would have this real fly imagination. You would have nothing that can detour you from what you really dreamed about, what you really wanted to be. And sometimes as a child, yeah, it's not always going to be practical and it's not always going to be realistic, but the whole thing is that it exists. That imagination to dream that desire, that, that burning fire, that light inside of you. And it's something that the world starts to beat you up along the way. 
And all you want to do is just have a little something for yourself. A little something just to show. And I get that. But the design of everything is almost combatant against everything that you dream about. The world in one sense, you go to school and they're telling you all these things of, yeah, you could be anything and just go ahead and put your mind to it and you could do this, you could do that, you could be all these things. They lie to you. They simply just lie to you and they tell you all these things because what they don't tell you is the moment you step out the guise of that school system, which has already indoctrinated you for 12 years on a bunch of bullshit, is that they're going to go ahead and make sure that you're not fit and capable to be able to survive or thrive within the system that they have created, which you're going to fail in the banking sector. You're going to fail at saving. I mean, people say, oh, I save money. Fine. I doubt there's anybody that's uh, on a regular basis sitting with more than 10 grand in their savings account. You don't know how to save. You, you know, your credit looks like shit. The only time it gets good is after it's already gotten bad. Then you learn how to get it good. You know nothing about debt. You don't know anything about economics or even how capitalism ends up working against you. You only learn through the trials and tribulations of your failures before you end up getting it together. And, you know, there's some people that end up having a teacher or end up having some advice, guidance, or a mentor, or people in their family that pull them under their wings, but that's less likely than most. I mean, I'm, I'm talking to regular folks here. You know, the people that go go and try to make an honest living, try to get by. All kinds of people. So this is what we have to go ahead and look at. Because like, 